Have your cholesterol levels in your blood spiked while you went on a low carbohydrate diet? If they have, in today's video, we're going to talk about why this may be the case and if this is a problem. We're going to dig into the lean mass hyperresponder profile, what this actually looks like, and then we're going to look at two separate lipid panels, looking at somebody who has an atherogenic lipid profile and somebody who has a lean mass hyperresponder profile and talk about what those differences are. So with that, let's jump in. In the beginning here, we're going to jump right into the lean mass hyperresponder uh, model and talk about what exactly is going on, and then I'll get into the lipid profiles. So I'm not going to go through the full study, but this graphic comes from Nick Norwitz and Dave Feldman and their team's study where they walk through the mechanisms on lean mass hyperresponders. And so essentially what we see is we have an individual who has a low carbohydrate intake, who has a low amount of body fat, and who has a high exp energy expenditure. So these are people who are exercising. And this state, what it creates, this carbohydrate restricted state with the low adiposity, the low body fat and the high energy expenditure depletes liver glycogen, lowers insulin levels, lowers leptin levels, increases glucagon levels, increases adrenaline levels, and possibly increases cortisol levels as well. And what you start to see is you start to see an upregulation in the release of fats from the fat stores. Now there's an enzyme that does this, hormone sensitive lipase, that is under the interaction of these different hormones. And basically when insulin is low and glucagon and these other counter regulatory hormones are high, the fat tissue starts to release fatty acids. Now these fatty acids go into circulation. They can go to the muscle. They can go to the liver. Now, when they come back, when they go to the muscle, the muscle will actually use those fatty acids. When they go to the liver, the liver will start to package these fatty acids inside cholesterol particles. This is the VLDL, the very low density lipoproteins. Now, the reason that the fats need to be packaged in a lipoprotein is because the fats are not water soluble. So the lipoproteins are a way for the body to carry these fats around because it's basically like having oil and water. So we have these proteins, these lipoproteins that'll carry the fats to the tissue. Now, once the fats are released from fatty, the, the fat tissue that gets to the liver, the liver packages them in their carrier proteins of VLDL. The VLDL is then circulated back out to the fat tissue and back out to the muscle tissue so that these tissues can use the fatty acids as well. So it's this constant network of recycling fats because there's no carbs present and glycogen is low. Glycogen is a storage of carbs. So the body has to start using fatty acids and the way that it's moving the fatty acids to all the tissues is through these lipoproteins through VLDL. Now, once that VLDL gets sent over to the muscle tissue or the fat stores and the fats that the VLDL carrier was, was holding get taken off, the VLDL gets turned into LDL and HDL. So some of the components of the VLDL go to LDL and some of the components go to HDL. And this is why in a lean mass hyperresponder profile, you actually see high amounts of LDL and HDL. Where, and you also, the other thing is you see low triglycerides in this lean mass hyperresponder profile, because again, the triglycerides, the fats that are floating around are also being used because there's no carbs. So the tissues, the muscles, the fat stores, the heart, et cetera, are all using these fatty acids because we don't have carbs present. And so this leads to what we see here in the lean mass hyperresponder profile, a high HDLC level, a high LDLC level with a low triglyceride level. And often these people are lean. Now, if this is the profile, this, this is relevant because if you're in this profile, your elevated LDL cholesterol and HDL cholesterol with low triglycerides may, may or may not actually be a problem. This may be a function of this particular state. It may just be par for the course. If you don't have a lot of carbs on board, then you need a way to transport all these fats to the different areas of your body. And this is the mechanism by which the fats are, or by which the body is transporting these fats through the VLDL cholesterol, which then leads to a rising of HDL and LDL because you have all this VLDL that's being taken up and used by the peripheral tissues. So I want to actually show you now what a lipid profile would look like with somebody. This is actually one of my clients who has a lean mass hyperresponder profile. And something interesting is we were able to drop his cholesterol levels pretty significantly just by adding carbohydrates in. So let me show you that profile here. So what we see in this lean mass hyperresponder profile is we see a sky high cholesterol level, 422 milligrams per deciliter. So very high cholesterol level. And that's marked by the LDL level being around 317 milligrams per deciliter. So it's quite high. Most of this is coming from LDL. But the other thing we see is that the HDL levels are almost over 100 milligrams per deciliter as well. So we have a high HDL and a high LDL. 
We also see that the triglycerides are actually around the ideal mark to some extent, which they are less than 100 and almost less than 75. So what we're seeing is that high total cholesterol, which is marked by both high LDL and high HDL, and then we're also seeing the low triglyceride levels. Now, the next thing we're seeing is that the VLDL cholesterol, the cholesterol that, that, that transport that we were saying was moving the fats to the tissues, is also quite low. The range is from 5 to 40, and we're at 9. So we're at the absolute bottom of the range. The cutoff, in case anybody is interested in some of the research, looks to be around 24 milligrams per deciliter. There's a paper looking on this. And then also, I think Dave Feldman has talked about this value as well. So that's where, um, that's some, what the mark that you would be looking for is where you start to see more problems if you're greater than 24 milligrams per deciliter on the VLDL. So this is a lean mass. This would technically be considered a lean mass hyperresponder profile. And the cholesterol here is arguably elevated in order to transport fats to the tissues or as a byproduct of transporting fats to the tissues. And we see triglycerides are low, HDL high, LDL high, total cholesterol high. And also we see here VLDL is also low here. So this is a lean mass hyperresponder. And again, side note, when my client had added in carbohydrates that he tolerated, we adjusted the diet, we brought fat down, these values came back down pretty precipitously. Right now he's in the 200s. So he almost halved his cholesterol values just by adding in carbs. There's no statins involved in this setup. And it's, again, the model is saying that the reason cholesterol is elevated is because there aren't carbs available and the body is shifting to using fats. And this is how it's transporting fats. So when you add in carbs, you basically lower the need to transport all these fats because now you can start to use carbs as the energy source instead of fats. And then the cholesterol levels uh, would lower in response to that. Now let's look at a lipid profile from somebody who has atherogenic dyslipidemia. And this is also from another client that I have. He is not a lean mass hyperresponder. This individual is dealing with metabolic dysfunction and his lipid profile actually looks a bit different. So let's look into that and see where the differences are. So in this lipid profile, we're not at 400, right? We're not super high. We're at 237. So we're higher than that 200 milligram per deciliter cutoff that modern medicine loves. The other thing that we see is this is coming largely from an elevated LDL cholesterol at 161. So the LDL is pretty high. Again, not as high as the 317 we saw in the last profile, but it is indeed high and the total cholesterol is high. But what do we see here? The HDL cholesterol is quite low. It's at 39. It's almost one third of what the previous cholesterol was in the lean mass hyperresponder profile. Why is it low here? It's low here because with the metabolic dysfunction, what we're seeing is that the LDL cholesterol triglycerides are not able to drop off the fats and also the VLDL cholesterol here at 37. They're not able to drop off the fats at the tissues because the tissues are having metabolic dysfunction. They're not taking up substrate. They're not taking up carbs. They're not taking up fats. This individual is dealing with pretty significant metabolic dysfunction, including obesity, type 2 diabetes, etc. So this is why we're seeing this. This is why we're seeing that there's actual metabolic dysfunction going on at the cell. And then these values that are showing us that the cells are not able to take up the fatty acids. And so what happens when, that, when, when the cells aren't taking it up, you get this overflow of fats back into the bloodstream. So LDL is high, VLDL is high. And what does HDL do? HDL is trying to bring the fats. Okay, we can't deliver these fats. Let's bring these fats back to the liver. So the HDL is grabbing onto the fats, bringing them back to the liver, and then the HDL gets catabolized at the liver or broken down at the liver, and then we have lower HDL values. So this is actually showing us the metabolic dysfunction, the low HDL values with the high LDL, high triglycerides, high total cholesterol, and high VLDL. And now if you remember what I was talking about with the VLDL, if VLDL is greater than 24 milligrams per deciliter, that's where you see a strong association with cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular disease risk. And basically, this is, I think, indicative of the metabolic dysfunction. It's basically saying, hey, we can't take up the fats that you're exporting in this VLDL cholesterol. We can't take up the fats from the bloodstream with this triglyceride to some extent. So they're kind of hanging around and floating around in the bloodstream. And so this is an indirect marker of what's going on at the cellular level where the cells are not able to take up the fats. And so this is the difference in the lipid profile. This is why we see those differences. And so if you're dealing with a lean mass hyperresponder lipid profile, your cholesterol may be higher, but the reasoning why it's, it's being raised and the context which is happening is different. 
You may not have metabolic dysfunction as a lean mass hyperspawner. You likely don't have metabolic dysfunction as a lean mass hyperspawner. However, with atherogenic dyslipidemia, you are seeing this profile elevate or, or, or adjust because of this metabolic dysfunction. Whereas over here with the lean mass hyperspawner, you're seeing a dysfunction just because the individual is basically using fats as a major fuel source and the body is using lipoproteins to transport those fats. So that wraps it up for this video that we walk through very quickly what are the mechanisms of the lean mass hyperspawners. We looked at two separate lipid profiles and I have a lean mass hyperspawner video coming out on my Mike Bave Science channel where you can actually see all the mechanisms explained in depth and I go through the paper that Nick Norwitz and Dave Feldman have actually uh, written to explain the mechanism so I go through it in depth. So check that out there. And if you're ever interested, you know, you can let me know in the comments if you want to see more content like this, or if you were a lean mass hyperresponder and you saw your lipid profile start to come down when you added in carbs. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next video.